Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank God because I am home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I called Holy Nation Church London my home. And when I was coming back, I was so tired, I was so drained. I went straight to the encounter with Pastor Jackie and really I was refreshed. And I was thanking God, Lord, I thank you because I'm home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you to minister this word. And I thank Pastor Mike to give me the opportunity to be here today. I didn't know that I'll be here, but it was in, in the plan and the will of God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We magnify and we glorify your holy name. Lord, I thank you for this time where we are going to share your word. Lord, your word is life. Your word is healing. Your word is power. Your word is like a hammer which breaks the rock into pieces. Lord, your word is a sword. Father, I pray that your word will work in us as we listen to it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you may open our hearts to receive your word. The spirit of the living God, you will minister to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. The word which I'm going to share with you is trust. Putting your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, and we are going to read verse 5. Verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding. Amen. But trust in the Lord. You don't have to figure it out Hallelujah. You don't, want, you don't have to think how things are going to happen. You only need to trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you cannot trust someone you don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. For you to trust God, you need to know God. Amen. And to know God is going to take time. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Having godly visions and dreams and encounters doesn't make you to know God. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. That having dreams, godly dreams, visions, and godly encounters with him doesn't mean that you know God. Hallelujah. Amen. We know God by his word. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. And the Word was God. So for us to know Him, we need to spend time with Him in His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. That is where we are going to know Him. When you look in the book of Acts chapter 9, Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter 9, verse, verse 3 to 7. As he journeyed, he came to Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, So, so, why are you persecuting me? So he saw the light and he heard a voice. But when he go in the book of Philippians, Hallelujah. Chapter 3 from verse 7. But Paul is saying, but what things were again to me, these things I counted laws for Christ. Yet indeed I count all things laws for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may know Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ Jesus. The righteousness which is from God by faith. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That was the cry of Paul's heart. Even though he had an encounter in the beginning, he had a voice, he saw the light, but now the man is crying, his heart is crying. The cry of his heart is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Paul wanted to know God. He wanted to know him. Because the Bible says in the book of Daniel that those who know they are God will be strong and carry out great, great exploits. Amen. Those who know they are God. Amen. We need, my dear brothers and sisters, to seek to know him. We have been seeking the heart of God. We have been seeking provision. We have been seeking healing. We have been seeking this and that. They are not bad, but let us seek to know God. All those things, they don't matter. One day the Bible says everything will be destroyed by fire. The world and all the works in this world are going to be destroyed by fire. Yeah. But what we are going to go with is the word of God. Our knowledge of God, our faith in Him is what we are going to live with this in this world. We are not going to take anything. Let us seek to know God. You know sometimes when we are in circumstances, we seek God and not we are seeking Him because we want to know Him, but we are seeking Him because of our circumstances. Amen. And God is kind, merciful, and loving, and will solve the problem. And then after when that problem is solved, we relax in seeking Him. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when Pastor Mike came to Uganda to do those weddings. Those ladies every night, they were sleeping in the church every night. In the church. Because we have to believe God for the money to do the wedding. And every night they were sleeping in the church. And every night they were in the church. They lost to wait and they, they were so scared. But when the wedding is over, you don't see them in the church anymore. They are not seeking God the way they used to seek Him. Mm -hmm. They were seeking Him because they need something from Him. And most of us, that is what we do. We are seeking God for something, but we are not seeking God to know Him. Amen. Hallelujah. And it really breaks the heart of God yeah. when we are seeking His hand and we are not seeking Him. It breaks His heart and it pains Him because God loves us so much. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. We need to trust him. But you cannot trust someone whom you don't know. I was looking in the Oxford Dictionary and I was checking about this word trust. The definition of trust. And it said firm belief in the real, 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 reliability or the ability of someone or something. Do you have a firm belief in the ability of God. Do whatever you are going through, God is going to sort it out. Do you trust God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind? A person who truly trusts God, he doesn't fear. And is not worried. No matter what circumstance you are in, no matter what situation you find yourself in. There are some people here, you are being afflicted in different ways. Hallelujah. There are some people here are going through a lot of things in different ways. It might be your body, you are being afflicted with sickness, with disease, with pain. Maybe you are afflicted with your children, the way they are living, your marriage, your finances, your business, whatever it is, God is telling you to trust Him. You don't have to figure it out. Five plus seven is twelve. Hallelujah. But with God, five plus seven is thousands and multitudes. Hallelujah. Because he took the five loaves of bread and the seven fish, whatever, and he had to take that and feed it to multitudes. So you don't have to figure it out. You don't even have to think how it is going to happen. Maybe it is healing whatever you are believing God for. You keep on trusting and don't fear. 
Cast that spirit of fear away from you. Because the Bible says that God never gave us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And when you are fearful, that is not God. That is from Satan, and you have to resist that spirit in the mighty name of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when you are full of fear, doubt, and unbelief, it doesn't move God. God is moved by our faith in Him, Amen. by our trust in Him. That is what will move God to act on your behalf so quickly if you put your trust in Him. Amen. But the moment we fear, it is like the situation which is before us is bigger than God, and God cannot do anything. And that will drive God away from working into our lives. Hallelujah. We need to know God. If we are to know God, we need to go deep in the world. Hallelujah. And it is a, is a personal God. You have to know him by yourself. Hallelujah. You have to seek to know him by yourself. And how are you how are you going to seek him? In the world. Because he is the world. You have to spend the time in the world. I know we are so busy. Hallelujah. We are so busy in this world. We are so busy. I'm telling you, but in the, in the midst of our busy life, we need to create time to be in the word of God. Hallelujah. In Uganda, I'm so busy. I'm running up and down from this church to this church, and I get tired. I'm so busy to the extent of not getting time to go. And then people, they come seeking for you. Oh, my child is sick. Oh, this and this. Oh, I don't have food. Oh, this and this. It is like you can't have a place on your home. But I thank God on church number four. I made a room there for myself and it is very far in the bush. People, they can't just come and look for me. And I go there and hide. And this time I said, I'm not going even to take a car. I am going to walk by foot so that they cannot trace me where I am. I am. Why? I need to spend time with God. Amen. I need to know Him. Amen. Hallelujah. When we look in the book of First Samuel, chapter, chapter 3, Samuel was taken in the house of God when he was young. And he grew up in, in the house of the Lord. But Samuel did not know the Lord. And the Lord called Samuel three times. But when you look in chapter 3 verse 6. Then the Lord, yet, then the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said. Here I am for you called me. He answered I did not call you my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Samuel didn't know the Lord by that time. Even though the Lord was calling him, but he couldn't even understand that the Lord was calling him because the word of God was not revealed to him. And when we look in verse 27, verse 21, then the Lord appeared again in Sheol, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the word of the Lord, God revealed himself to Samuel by the word. We need to spend time in the word. I don't care how many times you pray a day, how long you spend in hours. Maybe you spend the whole night praying. You will pray, but the devil is going to toss you around. Because you are empty, you don't have the word of God in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What we need is the word of God in us. We need to spend time in the word of God so that we can know him. Hallelujah. So that we can trust him. Yes. You cannot trust someone, I say it again, you cannot trust someone unless you know the person. And you cannot know the person unless you spend time with that person. Then you can know the person very, very well. Hallelujah. There is my brother Andrew here. I didn't know him. Andrew, where are Andrew, I know Andrew very, very well. Hallelujah. And I know that if I can tell Andrew anything, or if I want anything from Andrew, he will do it for me. Hallelujah. He will just do it for me. 
I know Pastor Wiki very well. If I tell him something, he'll do it for me. Pastor Mike will do it for me. Because I know that even if I call them, oh, I need such and such a mountain of money, I need a problem. I know they are going to give it to me. Why? Because I know them. And I trust them. Hallelujah. And when I am, I am going to tell them, even I don't have a thought, oh, they will not give me. Oh, Pastor Wick will not give me. Oh, Pastor Mike will not give me. Oh, Pastor Andrew will not give me. No, I have that confidence in them that whatever I ask for them, they are going to do it for me because I know them. Hallelujah. And God wants us to trust him to that extent where you have confidence in God that even you don't have any question or any imagination or you think about things out, but you just trust like a fool. Hallelujah. Because they call us fools who are born again. They call us sometimes, they call us fools. In Uganda, they call us fools. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Trusting God is taking risk. <laughs> if you are not ready to take a risk, you won't trust God. You won't trust God. Because trusting God is risk taking. When you look in the book of Luke chapter 1, we can look at Mary. When Mary, the angel, appeared to her and told her, you are going to have a son, you are going to give him the name of Jesus. Mary said, how can it be? Because I don't know the man. The man. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And they all want to be born or be called the, the, the Son of God. And the angel said that with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, let it be according to your word. Hallelujah. Let it be according to your word. The moment Mary believed me, that word became life in the womb of Mary. Straight away, that word became woman in the womb of Mary. Why? Because she believed. But she was taking risk because she wasn't married. And to see how is that baby, they are going to stone her to death. It was life and death experience. But Mary said, no, I am going to carry this ministry. Because that was the ministry she was carrying. I am going to answer this call. I am going to carry this baby. If to die, let me die. I am going to carry this baby no matter what. I know my God is going to protect me. I believe that was in the heart of Mary. Because if she was afraid and so fearful, oh, how can it be? I don't have a man. They are going to stone me to death. Because the law of Moses says, if you are pregnant and absent marriage, they will stone you to death. But Mary focused on the word of God. He focused on that message which was sent to her. And she believed in that word. And the word became God is waiting to confirm, to fulfill his words, not your words or my words, yeah. but his word. That is why he wants us to believe him, to trust him, to stand on his word, because yeah. God is faithful. Yeah. He's not a son of man that can, he can lie. He's not a son of man who can promise and then doesn't keep his promise. The promises of God are yes and amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. These are the promises of God on which we have to stand. In every situation you are going through, take the word of God and stand on the word and believe the word and you are going to see the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look in the book of Daniel chapter 3, we find the story of the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This boy, you know, this boy, you know the story. When Nebuchadnezzar put his image and he said, if you don't bow down anyone, when you hear the noise and you don't bow down to worship my image, you are going to be thrown in that furnace of fire. But these three, three evil boys, they stood on the word of God. The word he told them on the Ten Commandments, you shall not bow down to anything in heaven or on earth. You shall not bow down to anything. And they stood on that word. And they told the Nebuchadnezzar that these Hebrew 
boys, they are not bound down to your heart. And he called them. And they told him, look here, king. We are not going to bow down. Our God whom we serve is going to deliver us. But we are not going to bow down to this image. They refuse to bow down. Hallelujah. They refuse to bow down. And they stood still on the word of God. Let go in the book of Daniel chapter 3. We are going to only to verse 26. Hallelujah. Daniel, they refused bow, to bow down. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Then in Nebuchadnezzar, verse 27, sorry. And the satraps and administrators, the governors and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The area of their head was not seen, nor were their garments affected with the smell of the fire. Nor were they, and the smell of the fire was not in them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servant who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's words. And yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their God. Hallelujah. The king said that he sent his angels and he delivered his servant who trusted in him. My dear, when you trust in God, he's going to send angels and they are going to deliver you in any situation you find yourself in. Amen. And the Bible says that angels are ministering spirits. They minister to us according to the will of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The same God who sent those angels is the same God who is going to send an angel to deliver you if you keep your trust in God. Amen. You know in these countries, what I see, it is difficult to trust God. Hallelujah. Because you get everything for free almost. You go in the NHS, they treat you. You don't have food, they give you. don't have a job, you go and claim income support, universal credit, you name it. They pay for your house, everything. You get help, you can go to the food bank even and get food. So it is hard here to trust God. But in Africa, I have to trust God even for my sugar in my tea. I have to trust God even for soap to wash my, my clothes and my body. I have to trust God for each and everything. I have to live by faith. Everything I have to trust in God. Because I am in the midst of the people who are very poor beyond. Me. And they are all looking up to, up, up to me. In the all five churches now, God is beginning to bless, is beginning to bless us that the offering now in the five churches is coming to 10 pounds every Sunday. In the five churches, the offering is 10 pounds. That, that 10 pounds can only help to put fuel in the motorbike when we are running around in those churches. On the motorbike, even that 10 pounds cannot put fuel in my car to take me around for two days. And that is the offering we get every Sunday. So if I don't put my trust in God, there is no way I can survive in that environment. It has to be God. And all the time when I look back, I say, this is God. All the time when I'm looking back, this is God. Yeah. All the churches, the four of them, if they are on our land, the land is paid for. Four of them. Yes. And that has to be God. Yes. Hallelujah. So you have to live by faith, trusting God in each and everything. That is why some people here in this country, they don't see the breakthrough. You are sick, you go to the NHS in Uganda, you are sick, you don't even have any money to go to the hospital. If you don't have money, you are going to die. December, I was sick. I remember I sent a video to Pastor Micah, they prayed for me. You know that I have to stay in the hospital for only one night and I have to live with the camera. Why? Because one night they charge me almost 50 pounds. And I can't stay another day, I can't stay for three days. I said, I am going. But here you can go to the NHS. Hallelujah. 
So it is hard to trust God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. In the same Daniel chapter 3, verse 24, then, then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast the three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to, to, to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the force is like the Son of God. That was Jesus, the Son of God, who came in that fire and stood with them. He's the same Jesus who's going to come and stand with you if you can only trust Amen. The Bible says he never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed like shifting shadows. He doesn't change. Amen. Hallelujah. If you trust him, he's going to show up. I don't know what fire you are facing today. I don't know your situation. I don't know your circumstance. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know your affliction. But I'm here to assure you that keep your trust on in Jesus. It's going to show up. It doesn't matter how long you have been in that situation. Keep your trust on in Him. And sometimes we say we are trusting Him. We are trusting Him in our mouth, but in the heart. We are not trusting him. Mm -hmm. God is not a man whom you can lie and mock to. Because he sees what in the heart. Before he can do anything, he looks in your heart. And if my heart is full of fear, worry, doubt, and unbelief, it cannot move him. What is mo moves God is faith. When I put my faith in him, when I trust in him, and the frustrated some of you, they have given you a report from the doctor, they have given you a report, but I'm here to tell you if you believe in God, you are with that faith, you trust in him, you are going to frustrate every report of the doctors. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will frustrate them. God is not man. He's waiting for someone who is going to trust him so that God can show himself strong. Tears, they don't move God. If tears were to move God, the whole world is crying. In Africa, they are crying. Everywhere they are crying. God is not moved by fear, by tears. But he's moved when we trust him with all our confidence to be in him. When we rely on him and don't lean on anything but to lean on God and on his word. That is when God is going to show up. How was Daniel a young boy, I was be able to stand before this Goliath, a giant, a man of war. And David, just a small boy, he didn't have anything. The Bible says that he went into the shepherd's bag and he took five stones and he killed Goliath with one stone. That stone represents Jesus, that stone represents the word of God. Hallelujah. He went in the shepherd's bar and took only one stone. One stone was able to kill that giant. Yeah. Hallelujah. Trusting God is taking risk. And you'll be hearing voices. But we need to silence those voices. Yeah. I, mean, I, I believe when Shadrach was facing that fire, even when it was made water seven times, they were hearing voices who were done. You see that fire? You are going even to die before you reach in the midst. You are finished. You said goodbye to your family because today you are going to die. They were hearing those voices because the enemy is always there to discourage us, to bring fear and worry so that he can rob our blessing, our breakthrough. He's a thief. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And when he's stealing your breakthrough, he's going to bring fear. He's going to bring worry. You start to doubt God. You'll be fearful, and you are done. That is how some people die. They die because of fear. They give you a doctor. Or you can tell her she's a doctor. They are those people who die because of fear when the time is not yet. But they give you bad reports and they are so fearful. I remember one day when I was still in Uganda, my early, my, my early 20s, because I came here in my late 20s, my early 20s, 
when AIDS was just coming up in Uganda, so many were dying. And we had a sister at home. She went in the hospital and they told her that she had AIDS. She was positive. I remember that day when she came, she just went into her bed and she lied in her bed the whole day. Within, within like nine, ten months, she was dead. That is more than 30 years ago. But the man who passed that HIV to him right now is still alive. But within nine months, he was dead because she was so afraid of AIDS. And she died because of fear. So, fear is a killer. <coughs> we need to cast that fear away if you are going to trust God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, never gave us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, Amen. of love, and of a sound mind. And it doesn't matter what you are going through. It is your choice to choose to trust God or not. Hallelujah. It is a choice. Many people are going through hardship. It is your choice to rejoice in the midst of affliction, or to complain, or to murmur, or to walk in fear. It is your choice. It is up to you to decide. Don't tell me it is too hard. You don't know what I'm going through. Because it is too hard. Yes, I know. I may not know what I'm going, you are going through. But I know the word of God. Because there is a man who is called Job. He was afflicted. And this man didn't have the spirit of God as we have him today. But that man was able to worship God in the midst of affliction. Whatever you are going through right now, you cannot compare yourself to what Job went through. Yes. To lose all your wallets, everything, your children, everything within a day, and you lift up your hands and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. So don't tell me that I don't know. I might not know what you are going through, but I know the word of God. Because the word of God says in every situation, we should praise Him. But instead of praising him, we complain, we mama, and we are running from one person to another. We are running to the pastors. Even stop running to the pastors to pray for you. Stand your ground and believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they all, they all have their issues. They are going through. Don't think that the pastors, they are angels. No. They are human like you and me. Hallelujah. They have battles they are facing and they are not going to tell you those battles. But they are facing battles and you are bringing your battle on them again. You are keeping another load on them. They will break down. Hallelujah. But as a child of God, you can never ever say come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find the grace in the time of need. What is your need? Come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. You don't come in fear, in worry, crying, in trembling. Come boldly yes. to the throne of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we have a wonderful Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Trusting God brings confidence. Hallelujah. When you put all your trust in God, let me tell you, you have the confidence, that confidence to approach any situation which comes your way. You will have that confidence because you trust him. Why do you trust him? Because you know him. That is why you trust him. And it will give you confidence. We are going to look in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, chapter 1, 2 Kings chapter 4. I love this woman so, so much. This Shunammite woman. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This woman, she had only, she, was, she didn't have a, even a child. I believe you know the story. When Elisha and Gaius were passing by. And she would give them food. Then she told her husband, let me make a room for the man of God. Then they put a room. She put a table, a lamp, and a bed. And all the time when they come, Elisha and Gaius, they will rest there. In that room. And one day the Elisha said, what can we do to this woman who has been taking care of us? And they called her and she said, I don't need anything. It's like, I am among my people. Then Gaheti told Elisha that she doesn't have a child. And Elisha told her, this time next year you are going to have a child. Yeah. 
And she said, no, no, don't lie to me, man of God. But it came to pass. And she had a child. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to verse 18. Let us start verse 17. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son. When the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. He sat on one knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God shut the door upon her and went out. Then she called her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she summoned a donkey and said to the servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slack slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Gehazi, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. But was it well? She had a dead body behind her. She had her only child dead, but the woman was confessing it is well. Even when she went to the husband, she said it is well. But in the natural, it wasn't well because the boy, the only son, the heart is dead. But she was confessing it is well. And she answered it is well, verse 27. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came here to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is deep in distress, and the Lord has eaten it from me, and has not told me. So he said, he said, so she said, did I ask you a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand, and be on your, on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, and if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Hallelujah. Amen. So this woman was very clever. She knew, she knew that Gaius was a servant. Gaius has limitation as a servant. Mm -hmm. But she knew that Elisha was the master. She said, I am not going to the, to the servant, but I am going to run to the master. Amen. Hallelujah. I am going to the, run to the master. I am not going to run to the servant. Let me run to the master. Because I know that this child came from the word of the master on the servant. Amen. That's why I am here to tell you, stop running to the servant so God. Stop running to the pastors. Run to the master. Amen. Hallelujah. Run to the master. It is not about despising them. But let me tell you, you need to have your own faith. Because the time which is going to come, which you are going to enter in, you are going, not going to stand on the faith of Pastor Mike. You are not going to stand on the faith of Stephen. You are not going to stand on the faith of Pastor Wiki or Pastor Jackie. It is going to be your own faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So you need to exercise your faith now before that time comes. That's why we need to run to him instead of running to the master because the servant, because the servants, they have limitation. Amen. They have boundaries, but the master, our Lord Jesus, doesn't have any boundaries. He cannot be held by anything. There is no power which cannot stop. There is no power which can stop him. He is the God Almighty, the creator of the universe, and you are his child. Hallelujah. is waiting for you at the throne of grace for you to come boldly. Hallelujah. is waiting for you. Hallelujah. At the throne of grace. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We see that when Gehazi went and he put his staff on that child, that child didn't get, didn't get up. But when Elisha came, he was able to raise up that boy again. And he gave him back to his mother. Amen. The lady knew where to go in the time of adversity, yes. in the time of affliction. Hallelujah. In the time of oppression. Hallelujah. She knew where to go. She knew where to run. Do you know where to go? In that time, when you are facing that fire, do you know where to turn? Are you going to turn to Pastor Mike? Are you going to turn to anyone? You need to turn to him. Yes. Hallelujah. To turn to him. Because God will never fail you. There is a time when people, they come to me back at home and they want me to pray for me and they don't know what I'm going to do. I can't even pray. I will tell them that I will, but even I don't. Sometimes. Because as myself, I am facing a battle which I cannot disclose. And you are bringing your battle for me to stand. I can't. Unless I am done with this one, then I am able to stand. So we need to know God by ourselves. The time which is coming is not going to be the easy time. But the only way people are going to stand are the people who know their God. There are so many people who are worried, oh, what is going to happen when we are not going to buy? We are not going to sell, we are not going to travel because of this and this. Me, I am not afraid of that. The God who gave Elijah food when he was running away from Jezebel, and the food came from heaven on the plate, and the angel told Elijah that eat, and he ate the food, and again another plate from heaven. And the angel told him that eat because you still have the journey to go. And he went in the power of that food for 40 days without eating. He's the same God who's going to feed us during that time. Amen. So we don't have to worry. When you trust him and you know him, you don't worry about the time which is going to come because you know my God is going to provide. Amen. If I am in Uganda and God needs me to come to minister in Uganda, I will be on my knees in Uganda like this. Oh, the next minute I am in holy nation. Amen. And after the next minute I am back in Uganda. Amen. So let them put whatever they put on they put on in this world. We have a God who is about everything. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the God, the creator of the universe. The God is the one who created those people who are doing all those things. He's about them. Amen. But he's looking for a man or a woman who is going to trust him. Hallelujah. Trust him with all your heart. Yeah. And don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God bless you. Yeah.